just come here to worship Jesus and to give thanks and praise to the Lord. God's been so good to us. We just want to take this time to worship Him and to give Him honor and thanksgiving and praise. Let's stand. We'll go before His presence with thanksgiving. Thank you all for joining us online tonight as we worship the Lord. Just get in and have a good time serving your God. Father, thank you for the service tonight. Thank you, Lord, for this time to be in your presence. Thank you for your love. Thank you, Lord God, for all that you have done for us. We love you. We appreciate you. And we ask, God, that you will bless the service tonight. We ask that you will meet the needs in every heart and every life. We thank you, Lord God, for all our brothers and sisters worshiping with us online and, and each and every one that is here in your house, God, as we are looking to you tonight, God, meet with us. Let your presence be with us in this service. Have your way. Touch our hearts and our lives and help us, God, to look to you for all things. Bless and accomplish your will tonight. In Jesus' name we pray and ask these things. Amen. Amen. We'll sing that song, When the Roll is Called Up Yonder. When the Roll is Called Up Yonder. Let's sing it unto the Lord. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more, and the morning breaks eternal bright and fair, when the saint of us shall gather over on the other shore, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, when the roll is called up yonder, when the roll is called up
start me out now. <laughs> Touch our hearts, touch our lives, and help us in Jesus' name we pray and ask all these things. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. You may be seated tonight. What a blessing it is to be in God's house in a midweek service singing. I told her before service, we haven't done Everybody Will Be Happy in a long <laughs> time. I said, we need to brush up on that one. <laughs> and for some reason, the other song was stuck right. in both of our minds. <laughs> but it's... <laughs> that's all right that we got it out and, and for all of you that are watching online that was to cheer you up at our expense I mean not watching but all of you are worshipping with us online we, we thank you for um, being a part of the service 
and, and worshiping God with us and, and serving the Lord faithfully in, in all that we do. And so she's going to sing us a song. I should go ahead and I'll just receive the offering while she's getting ready for her song. Let's take up an offering. Let's give us unto the Lord tonight. There's always a link there for you to join us online. You can always give and support our work here. Let's pray. Father, thank you, Lord God, for this time to receive this offering. We pray, God, that you will bless it. We pray, Lord Jesus, thank you for every gift and every giver. Bless and according to our giving tonight. In Jesus' name we ask these things. Amen. She's going to sing us a song.
Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Worship and praise the holy name of Jesus. What a privilege to be able to, to know Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. And to know that He is God, right? And He lives, He lives in us. And you know the songs that we sing in the beginning, the, the congregational song. We're talking about heaven when the roll is called up yonder. Talking about the, the attendance roll or the, whatever roll it is when he's calling off the names. We want to be there in God's kingdom, right? Mm -hmm. And they say everybody will be happy. And so the songs were, were chosen by design because that's what I want to talk about tonight. I want to talk about heaven. I want to talk about that place that God has prepared for those who believe. Not for the unbelievers, not for those who do not want to allow Jesus to become their Lord, which means he have control of our life. You know, a lot of people want Jesus to be their Savior. They want Jesus to save them from sins and all these things, but it's more important to have Jesus as your Lord because if he's not Lord of your life, then he can't do anything in you. And so he's both Lord and Savior. And so that's what heaven is about, those who allow Jesus to become their Lord. And their Savior, the one that called the shots in their life. And so the message tonight is about heaven, looking for something better, right? And I want to read to you from Hebrews chapter 11, verses 8 through 10 for our Bible reading for tonight. Talking about Abraham. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed. And he went out, not knowing whither he went. By faith he sojourned in the land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which had foundation, whose builder and maker is God. I want to use that for a text tonight. I want to preach about where he says, for he looked for a city which had foundations, whose builder and maker is God. And I, I want to preach about looking for something better. Looking for something better. There is more to, this, to life than what this life has to offer us. God has better things for us. A better place, better promises, a better life altogether. And it all starts with us giving ourselves to him that he can reveal this greatness and his power in us. So let's look to God in prayer before I preach a message tonight. Lord Jesus, thank you for this time to, to preach your word. Thank you for all that will hear it tonight, us here in the house of the Lord and those who are worshiping with us online. Tonight I pray for the message that you will bless it and unction an, an it and, and use it for your glory, God. Thank you for the words that will be shared tonight. Let it speak to our hearts anointed God and, and let it touch us in a special way tonight that only your will will be accomplished in Jesus name we ask these things amen, amen. amen. and so the message is looking for something better now there's a song which we probably heard before and uh, most of us of all of us have heard before and it's called this world is not my home this world is not my home I think it was sung by Jim Reeves back in the days and he says this world is not my home I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. Speaking of the sky, right? Beyond the blue. The angels beckon me from heaven's open door. And I can't feel at home in this world anymore. And, and this song really sums up a Christian's experience. Because once a person gets saved and they, they begin to walk with God and begin to live for God, God will begin to impress upon their heart this desire for a better place. God will begin to impress upon our heart to let us know that this world is not our home. This earth that we live on, that we have a short amount of time, even if we live to be 100 years, what is that compared to eternity? It's nothing. It's just a drop in the bucket. It's just a short time. 100 years is nothing when it compares to forever and ever and ever in eternity. And so God may give us a good life on this earth. 
And he may give us a lot of blessings upon this life, upon this earth while we live and while we serve him. And while we follow him, he will add to our lives blessings. He will give us many things as we are faithful to him. But at the same time, there will be a desire, a longing in our soul for something better. For a land where we don't have to worry about evil. Where we don't have to worry about people robbing us and people... Uh, we have to worry about murder and, and theft and deceit and lies and corruption. There is a better place. There is a better place that God has prepared for His children. It's called heaven. And so tonight, I want to speak to you about heaven. Isn't that something good to talk about? Yes. All right, we talk about heaven tonight. Something, looking for something better. We are looking for a better place. You know, today in our world, the rich and the elites of, our, of this world... They are looking for a better place because they themselves are sick and tired of this earth. And so they want to go colonize moon. <laughs> they want to go create their, some want to go to Mars, some want to go to the moon and, and set up their own special place where they can live and where they're the only one that can live, that can be there. And, they'll, and all the, the, the ill, or not the ill, but all the, the evil people of the world will not be allowed to be a part of their community. We know Jeff Bezos wants his new project about Blue Moon, where he can set up his own colony, I guess, of his own people. They're all looking for something better because they know, they know this earth is not all that there is. Right? They know this earth is not all that there is to look forward to. They understand no matter how much money they have, they're going to have to leave it one of these days. They understand that they may live in a mansion but one of these days, somebody else will live in it. They understand that they may drive the finest of cars and fly in the best, uh, the, I was going to say flying the best automobile. <laughs> they probably do that too. But flying the, in the best, um, best plane and, and jets and all these things. And, and they understand all that. But they understand one thing also that nothing, none of those things are lasting. There is a, they, they're all going to leave it behind one of these days. And if they don't have something to look forward to, they don't have a place to go after this life, then all would be lost. Everything that they have labored for will be lost. There will be nothing for them to, to latch on to in eternity but a fearful looking forward of judgment and fiery indignation because they don't have something better to look forward to because they're not saved. And it's not that God is prejudiced. It's not that God doesn't love them. God loves everybody. When Jesus died on the cross, he said, for God, the Bible said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So we see the love of God demonstrated to all mankind. Everyone can get saved. It doesn't matter where we are from, what our nationality is, what language we speak. If we believe in Christ and surrender our life to Him, every one of us can be saved. Every one of us can have a place in heaven. Every one of us can have God living in us. Every one of us can experience the same thing in Christ Jesus because God is not a respecter of person. And so the invitation is given to all mankind to come. To receive Jesus. The invitation is given to all of us to let us know that there is more to look forward to than a good career. There is more to look forward to than a big house. There is more to look forward to than a retirement. There is more to look forward to than, um, you know, touring the world and enjoying all the pleasures of life. There is more. There is more. All those things get old after a while. Matter of fact, you get older, you don't want to go anywhere you don't want to sit in a car and travel too long. The older you get, you can't even taste food sometimes because all everything began to change. He began to look at your life and said, is there not something better? Well, the answer is yes. Yes, there is a better life. Yes, there is a better life, and that is the life of a Christian. Yes, there is a better hope, and that is the hope of eternal life. And yes, there is a better place, and that is the place called heaven where God is preparing for his people. And so we are looking for a place that is all, and they are trying, like I shared, the rich and the elite, they're looking to go build a place for themselves. But we don't have to build it. God already built us a place. 
God already have a place prepared for us. God already have a, a city, as we shared in the book of Revelation, how we talked about the streets are paved with gold. There is a place already prepared. We just have to get there, right? We just have to be ready to get there. A place that is built by the hands of God and not by man. An everlasting place and definitely a better place. And as the song said, this world is not my home. Jesus said this. He said that we are in this world, but we are not of it. In other words, we are living in it. And in it, God have a purpose for us. We are just here for a short time to fulfill our mission and our purpose and to make preparation for eternity. That's all we are doing here. Right? We are here for a purpose. God has a mission for our life. Each and every one of us. God have a purpose for our life. And while we are living on this earth, God has given us ample or plenty of time to prepare for the life to come. Right? We have to make preparation because there is a better place. And that's what we see in this Bible reading that I read to you concerning Abraham, which was a man that loved God and God had called him to to raise up a nation out of him, which we know today as the nation of Israel. God called him when he was in, in his own na na um, native land in Ur of the Chaldeans. The Bible said the Lord called him out and brought him into Canaan to give him that land where Israel is located today in that general area, which is much more land than what they have today. God gave it to Abraham and he blessed him. He blessed him tremendously. He gave him a lot of riches, a lot of wealth. He gave him a promised child, Isaac, and Jacob, his grandson, Jacob and Esau. And, he, and through these young men, he was going to raise up this nation. And Abraham was a very blessed man. He was a very wealthy man. He had a walk with God. The Bible called him the friend of God. And he had so much going for him. But yet, in his heart and in his mind, he was reaching for something better. Yes, in his heart and his mind, he's like, thank you, Lord, for all this blessing and all this stuff. But there have to be something better than this earth that we're living on. They have to be a place that I know know where God dwells and so that's what he said there in verse 10 he said for he looked for a city which had foundations who builder and maker is God in spite of all the blessings that God had given to this man in the back of his mind he was looking for heaven in the back of his mind he was waiting for that day when he will go to be with God and live in God's kingdom forever and ever and ever and that's the message tonight looking for something better there is something better than this this life there is a better life than this one that we live here this short time that we're upon this earth with all the pain and all the misery and all the fear and all the disappointments and all the heartbreak and all the the, the things that are that are going to the wayside as we live and, and and continue in this life there is something better God has prepared a better place for us there is a hope that goes beyond this life and I'm so thankful for that tonight that God God makes it a reality for us when Jesus is living in our heart. When Jesus is our Lord and Savior, heaven becomes a reality. When Jesus is our Lord and Savior, heaven is an assurance. It's not a guess that I hope I make it there. When you have Jesus in your life, when you are genuinely saved, when you are born again, and you will know when you are born again. Say, so how would I know, preacher? You will change. Your life will change. Your behavior will change. Your attitudes will change. The things that you did that are displeasing to God will change. And if you haven't changed, then you really are not saved. You're not a Christian. And you do not have that hope in your life. But if you're a Christian, there will be a change that will take place. There will be an absolute change. And you will have an assurance in your soul that one of these days you will be going into a better place. One of these days when the roll is called up yonder, you will be there. One of these days, uh, you will be with mothers, fathers, sisters, brothers. We will all be singing around the throne in that happy land above where Jesus is. And so I'm talking about something better. He was fulfilling. Abraham was on earth fulfilling God's purpose and, and, and doing what God wanted him to do. But at the same time, he was looking for a better place. He was, he was, he was, he was, he was living in the future, if you will. God, I'm looking. I'm looking for that time when I will go to be with you. 
you. I'm looking for a time when I will stand before God and I will hear him say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. He was looking for a place, a city where the angels and the saints of God are a better place tonight. And so that's what I'm talking about. There is a better place for us. Thank God for all his blessings. But if all you live for is this life, you will be sadly disappointed. In the end, you will be definitely disappointed. If you don't have assurance of eternal life, you really don't have anything. You really don't have anything. Because money will fail you, people will fail you, health will fail you, everything will fail you in the end. You don't believe it? Talk to them older folks. They will let you know. Everything will fail in the end, and the only thing that will left is that threshold for you to cross over. Are you going to make it to heaven? Or are you going to descend into the lower parts of the earth? There is a better place that we can make that choice. Even some of Abraham's descendants had the same mindsets. They were looking for something better also. In Hebrews chapter 11, verse 13 through 14, he's speaking about the descendants of Abraham. He said, these all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off and were persuaded of them and embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on this earth. For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. In other words, they're saying, this world is not my home. This world is not my home. I'm just passing through. I'm just going through. My time will come to an end. And so they're saying, we don't care much about, yes, we're thankful for everything God gave us. We will enjoy the house that he provides for us to live in. We will enjoy the cars that we drive. We will enjoy the food that he gave us to eat. We will be thankful for the clothes that we get and we wear and place upon our bodies. We will, be, we will enjoy the company of our families and our friends. But that is not our goal. That is not our focal point in life. We are looking for something better. We know there is something beyond this life. And we are looking for it. And the Bible said they declare plainly that a seek a country they were searching and looking for the country that God lives in to where they can be a part of and so they were looking for something better tonight God have something better for us also God have something way better than what you can ever imagine for your life he called us and he saved us and he's preparing us for something better for a better place and he will return for his church one of these days, a church that is ready, a church that is prepared, a church that is holy. He will return for us and he will take us to a better place called heaven. The Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 13 verse 14, he said, For here we have no continuing city, but we seek one to come. Yes. Amen? Yes. Here we have no continuing city. You're not going to live in that house forever. You're not going to live in that city forever. You're not going to work in that job forever. Your retirement is not going to last forever. It will all come to an end one of these days. The question is, do you have somewhere better to go? Do you have a better place to go to? If you don't, tonight there is hope for us, for you. Tonight, if you will let Jesus come into your heart, if you will humble yourself and say, Lord God, I do not have this assurance of eternal life. And Lord, I want to come to you because I know you died for my sins on the cross. I know you rose again from the dead. And Lord Jesus, the preacher told me, if I will believe and confess my sins to you, you will save me and you will place an assurance in my heart that I can have everlasting life with you forever in your kingdom. And it is so if we will believe God. It is so if we will give our life to God. He said, for here we have no continuing city, but we seek one to come. Just like the saints of old, we are looking for some place better or something better. We're looking for a place that is full of righteousness. How many of you tonight, I know you do, will love to live in a place that is good. Where there is no crooks. Right? Where there is no wicked people. 
where there is no gangsters, there is no murderers, there is no rapists, there is no uh, child molesters, there is no um, thieves, there is no whoremongers, no adulterers, no fornicators, no wicked people living there. There is a place like that. It's called heaven. You're not going to find it on earth. The Bible said this whole earth lieth in wickedness. Every part of this earth is wicked. Corruption is filled. This earth is full of corruption and the hearts of men are desperately wicked and their hearts are full of evil without God. That's the world we live in. That's the reason why they don't think twice about shooting somebody just for $10. That's the reason why they don't think twice to kill someone and break into their house because the hearts of men are evil continually, the Bible said. And the only thing that can take away that evil is the blood of Jesus. The only thing that can take away the evil of our heart is the precious blood of the Lamb. And there is no place on earth that man can go to that they can say, this place is better. Even the safest of neighborhoods <laughs> are, are terrible. <laughs> Amen? Even the safest of, it may be safe for us to live, <laughs> but you can't live there forever. <laughs> you can't live there forever. And so there is a place, a righteous place, a place that is free from cruelty and hardship, a place where sin is not present and wickedness is forbidden. Peter said it this way in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 13. He said, nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. Oh, wouldn't it be so awesome to live in such a place wherein dwelleth righteousness, where your life is full of peace, where there is no shortness of joy, where there is no shortness of uh, provision, where people are not sleeping on the streets. Maybe even heaven, if you sleep in the streets, that's still better than anywhere else. Is the streets paved with gold, right? <laughs> Lord, I'd rather be homeless in heaven than have a mansion on earth. <laughs> right? At least I'll be sleeping on, on the streets of gold in the presence of God in a city of joy and peace and happiness and, and, and goodness. He said, we're in dwelleth righteousness. That's the place we're going to. We're looking for something better. You're not going to find it on this earth. And so God provided a place for us. A city called heaven. A place wherein dwelleth righteousness. Where evil doesn't rule. Where corruption doesn't dominate the lives of men and women. We're looking for a righteous place. Looking for something better is the message tonight. A righteous place. Our hope goes beyond this life. In a righteous city where we will live forever with God. Not only that, it will be a rich city. A very rich city. Heaven is a rich place. See, there will be no poor people in heaven. Right? There's not going to be any poor people there. There are not going to be any people begging. Because God will supply all our needs. All our wants will be supplied. There will be no suffering. No tears. No worries. A city that will be lavishly supplied with everything. A city where the streets, as assured, are paved with gold, where the gates are made out of pearls and the walls are made of precious stones. As Jesus uh, uh, so, so clearly told his disciples in John 14, 1 and 2, he said, let not your hearts be troubled, or your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go prepare a place for you. Right? It's a rich city. All of God's people are going to be rich one of these days. We'll all be rich because we'll all be royalty living in a royal family. And so that's what we're looking for tonight. He said, don't lay up treasures upon this earth. Where moth and rust that corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. He said, but lay up treasures in heaven. Where the thieves can't break through and steal it. And where the moth can't can corrupt it. And where the rust can't take over it. And so God is letting us know, we are looking for something better tonight. Amen. We are looking for somewhere better tonight. A righteous city. A rich city. 
God has provided something better for us and more importantly, an everlasting city. We don't have to worry about things changing because of different elected officials. How many nations we have seen at one time they prosper, but over the, 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 over the years and over time because of corrupt politicians and evil rulers, their country is destroyed. Their city is destroyed. Their towns are destroyed because of the change of elected, official, of elected officials who do not know how to govern, govern or who are naturally evil in their heart and just are selfish and just want to see other people suffer while they are being blessed. Yeah. We don't have to worry about that in heaven because Jesus is king mm -hmm. and nobody can dethrone him. There will be no elections. Right. He will rule forever and ever on his throne. And he will rule in righteousness and equity. There will be fairness in heaven. There will be nothing but good things in heaven. And so Jesus is established as king eternally over the city. There will be stability. There will be peace. This is what God revealed to his holy prophets and apostles to share with us so that we can know better things are coming. Better things are coming for those who are saved and have Christ living in their life who are righteous and are not engaged in sinful lifestyle and sinful activity that keeps you outside of this city. For nothing that defile can enter into this city. No sin will allow into the city. It's a holy city, right? It's a righteous place. It's for those who will make the effort to do the right thing. And live right before God. And God will help us. None of us are perfect. We all fall from time to time. We all fail. But as long as we are doing our best, God will help us. God will help us. It is, it is a city that will never be conquered. And never be overrun by enemies. It's a city that God has prepared for his people. That as a, a stability, if you will, that when we get there, all fears will be taken away. All worries will be taken away. All anxieties will be taken away. We don't have to worry about the future. Sometimes as a, as a father and as a man living in the, even in this country, the greatest nation upon earth, you kind of worry about the future a little bit. What is this nation going to become? Are we going to turn to a socialist, communist place? We don't know. We see when you get to heaven, that will never be a thought. That will never be a thought. There will never be a worries because... God is, is the one that is ruling that city. It's called heaven. He said, Abraham, for he looked for a city, which had foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Even though God had blessed this man, Abraham, so much, and God had done so much in his life, yet he was looking for a better place. He was looking for heaven. He wanted to be where God is. Tonight the question is, do you want to be where God is? When you leave this life, do you want to go to heaven? And do you have that assurance of heaven? One more verse of scripture I'll read to you as she's getting ready to sing. In Hebrews chapter 12, verse 28 and 29. He said, Wherefore, we receive in a kingdom which cannot be moved... That's assurance, right? This kingdom will never be moved, right? Wherefore, we receive in a kingdom which cannot be moved. Let us have grace, whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. For our God is a consuming fire, right? Our God is a consuming fire. So he said, if you want to go to heaven... Number one, you have to be saved. You have to give your life to Jesus. You have to repent of all your sins and allow Jesus to come into your heart and become your personal Lord and Savior. But not only that, but you have to serve the Lord acceptably with reverence, give God respect as God, and with godly fear. And he sums it up with that verse, for our God is a consuming fire. In other words, he's not one to take lightly. He's not one to play around with. God is not someone that we can push off to the side and say, I will serve you when I'm ready. Or I will do your will when I feel it's right for me to do it. 
That's not when you do it. You serve God when God reaches out to you. You come to God when the Lord extend mercy. He said, one more time, wherefore we receive in a kingdom which cannot be moved. He said, let us have grace. Let us have the favor of God. Whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. For our God is a consuming fire. See, as a Christian, we must keep our eyes on Jesus. And we must keep our mind in heaven. We're just pilgrims on our way to a better place. And so tonight, the question is, I'm preaching about looking for a better place. The question is, is heaven what you're looking forward to? Are you looking for a better place? A place where indwelleth righteousness. A place that is rich and flourishing with all the blessings from God. And a place that is eternal and stable and that will never change. That's what I'm looking for tonight. I'm looking for something better. I thank God for every blessing. Every blessing He played, He poured in my life. Physically, mentally, spiritually, financially. Every blessing. But that's not my goal at all. I don't even think much about those things. I just use them as God gave them to me. But my mind is on that city. My mind is on that city, that, that glorious city that Jesus said, I'm going to prepare for you. And he said, if they go, and he's coming again. When God come back, you better be ready. You better be ready tonight. And she's going to sing a song. We're going to worship the Lord tonight. Looking for something better. There's more to life than your job. There's more to life than your little life that you're carving out on this earth. There's more, way much more than this little thing that we're holding on to. Tonight, the message is there's far beyond Beyond this world, there are greater things to, to lay hold on. And God is making it available to us. Let's make an attempt to seize this kingdom that God has for us. God bless you. She's going to play. We'll find a place to pray tonight. Spend some time in prayer. Seek the Lord tonight. If you want to pray, you want to come to the altar. You're not a Christian. You want to give your life to the Lord. Just come. I'll pray with you. You want to make that decision tonight. Tonight can be that decision. Tonight can be that time that we can commit ourselves to the Lord and, and don't be ashamed or afraid just come and I, as a preacher I will pray with you or if you just want to pray all together let's just pray and worship the Lord Amen. Go ahead.
themselves and take up their cross and follow Jesus, those who are willing to make changes in their lives, to do right before the Lord, there is a better place, and I'm glad to report to you tonight, everyone can go to this place if they so choose, everyone can make it to heaven if they will do whatever it takes to get there. Father, thank you tonight for the service. Thank you, Lord, for something better. Thank you for a better life, a better place, a better kingdom. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you have done so much for us and you've provided so much for us. And now, God, it's up to us to get there with your help. Continue, God, to draw us closer to you. Help us, God, as we serve you. Bring us back at the appointed time. And, Father, we want to take this time to give all the honor and the glory to you. Whatever good is done. To God be the praise and to God be the glory. In Jesus' name we ask these things. Amen. Thank you all for joining us online tonight. May God bless you. Remember we'll be here Sunday morning, 9.30 Central Time. To worship and praise our God. Amen. God bless you.